Uh, welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we will be presenting a poisoning case. Shall we start, sir? Yes. So we have a 56-year-old male who was brought to our ER in a trolley with alleged history of deliberate self-harm by consumption of an unknown quantity of carbamate or furidin mixed with ethanol at his residence and he was bought 45 minutes following the ingestion. Okay. Uh, since it is known to us that it's a poisoning case, ourselves and the staff has approached the patient wearing personal protective equipments. Uh, on our initial 10 second assessment, patient was conscious oriented and talking in one full sentence. Mm -hmm. Airway appears to be patent with no pooling or gurgling of secretions. Uh, coming to breathing part, air entry was bilaterally equal with maintaining a saturation of 98% in room air with a respiratory rate of 23 cycles per minute. On auscultation, bilateral crepitations was present. Coming to the circulation part, all peripheral pulses were palpable with a BP of 130-90 and a pulse rate of 112 beats per minute. I have asked the staff to put two white bore IV cannulas at this point of time. Okay. Coming to the disability, uh, he was maintaining a full GCS uh, and pupils were bilaterally uh, equally reacting to light 2.5 mm. Uh, GRBS was 117. Coming to the exposure part, uh, patient was uh, having a kerosene-like smell on our approach and uh, we asked the staff to fully expose the patient and collect the clothes in a plastic bag. Then we asked them to uh, have an uh, entire body wash with soap and water including the mucous membranes and oral okay. cavity and everything. What is the end of body wash in this patient? Uh, the absorption can occur from the uh, skin mm -hmm. also. Okay. Uh, then uh, following this gastric lavage was performed uh, and uh, the gastric aspirate was sent for toxic. How long you give gastric lavage in a poison case? Two hours uh, extended for about four hours but provided the patient has ingested at the same time. If it's a staggered ingestion then it can Multiple be delayed. Dose. Uh. So normally it is one hour one but in a massive <laughs> overdose or four if hours. they are taken extended release uh, some preparations or taken with alcohol mm. all these things can delay the uh, absorption. absorption time in that case you can extend the gastric aspiration even after that mm. normally it uh, mm. normal timing is one hour by the time it will be removed from the stomach that is the mechanism and when you're exposing the body we also look for any external injuries mm -hmm. as such mm -hmm. and any discoloration of nail skin hair we want to stabilize the cervical spine in this type of patients if the patient's patient sensorium is full and is moving around, there's no indication, sir. But let's say if the patient has come with decreased sensorium and we're not able to elicit any tenderness in the spine, at that point in time, we do okay. not. Uh, uh, gastric lavage was performed and the gastric aspirate was sent for toxicology analysis. Blood and urine was also collected for the uh, sample analysis. And uh, the patient was asked to keep NPO. Uh, Riles tube insertion was... Blood, what do you want to send? Pseudocolin estrays and oh. toxicology samples. Uh, patient was uh, maintained NPO, RT was inserted, Follies catheterization was performed. And, uh, Why do you want to give, uh, put uh, Follies catheter? Follies since it is a 56 year old male patient, I am expecting a BPH in the patient. So if atropin is given, yeah. patient can develop urinary retention. Oh. So uh, since we are giving atropin, we have to be very careful. It, there is a high chance of urinary retention in this patient. Okay. And uh, patient was put on continuous cardiac monitoring. Mm -hmm. As a and on reassessment, patient was uh, conscious oriented, uh, airway maintaining airway and maintaining a saturation of 98 percent, and uh, heart rate was also uh, uh, 86 per minute. You told uh, first it was 140. 113. Why there is no bradycardia? Uh, uh, because in twin, uh, maybe. Uh, because 20% patients can have persistent tachycardia, right. okay. nicotinic activity. Okay. So 20% of the patient who, who, who is having OP poisoning can have tachycardia, tachycardia. and hypertension. Mm. That is because of nicotinic, nicotinic action activity. and if already given atropine then that may be the reason. Yes. Okay. Alcohol, uh -huh. what happens if your patient is taken with alcohol? Alcohol also produces tachycardia, tachycardia. and hypertension. Mm. Uh, sir, as a part of adjunct to primary survey, uh, we have asked for an ECG and for a uh, ABG. Mm -hmm. uh, ABG was showing no acid base imbalance except Why for. Why you want to take an ECG in this patient? Uh, QT prolongation, arrhythmias. Arrhythmias. Which arrhythmia? Which arrhythmia is common in OP boys? It's only bradycardia. Heart blocks. <laughs> Heart blocks. Somebody, 
somebody is having tachycardia elderly individual why you want to take an ecg what happens if there is tachycardia what happened to the coronary circulation what happened to the diastolic time decreases so, so if there is a already pre existing coronary artery disease there mm-hmm. it can come up come out okay so that's why we are taking an ecg otherwise we are seeing on the monitor no? we are seeing the rhythm on the monitor okay so whenever you have a tachycardia you can see many patients in icu whenever they have a tachycardia you can see actually there is st depression mm-hmm. tivo inversion that is due to either it may be due to the rate dependent st depression or it may be a pre existing coronary artery disease that is aggravated due to tachycardia uh, we have taken an ebg which is showing no acid base balance except for uh, a lactate of 5.5 and potassium of 2.7 what are the acid base disorders you <coughs> get in op compound poisoning metabolic acidosis mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. if there is the patient has persistent vomiting second to that metabolic alkalosis can also be the most occur. common thing mm-hmm. severe vomiting or somebody might have induced vomiting before that produces alkalosis mm-hmm. that is a most common finding you get in op poisoning but afterwards like you told the patient can have metabolic acidosis that mostly may be due to lactic acidosis yeah. hypoxemia seizure all these things uh So then we have started the patient on atropin. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2 mg IV stat was given. Mm-hmm. Uh, followed. Why is that atropin? Heart rate is very high already. Uh, the treatment for OP poisoning itself is atropin. That I know. To decrease the secretions. Okay. So here, here the, our aim is not to see the heart rate and whether heart rate increases or decreases. That is not our problem. Our problem is to control the secretions. Mm-hmm. That's why we are starting atropin. Okay. Uh, sir, so two mg IV stat was given, and mm-hmm. uh, till the secretions decreased mm-hmm. from two mg itself, the secretions have subsided. Mm-hmm. Then the twenty percent was started as an infusion. Two mg at uh, secretion will not come down. Please. In a real OP poisoning, two mg is nothing. Mm-hmm. You have to give continuous infusion or higher bol- bolus doses like ten mg initially. Then every uh, every five minutes, so five mm-hmm. two to three mg should be given. Mm-hmm. What is the half life of atropin? Three minutes. Three minutes. But in secretions, we we half life uh, how it acts, which all areas half life is very important. Heart. Heart rate is very important. Mm-hmm. Other areas like your pupillary dilatation, secretions, all are not depending on the half life of the atropin. Okay, but the heart rate alone is depending on that dose of atropin or duration of atropin infusion. So that may increase or decrease depending on your duration, but uh, the secretions will definitely come down. Mm-hmm. Okay. uh since we uh we were not sure what the poisoning was uh we have started him on praldoxine mm-hmm. praldoxine 2 2 g iv stat was given mm-hmm. uh followed by 500 mg per hour iv infusion mm-hmm. okay. for the next 48 hours uh since he is an alcoholic we have given thiamine okay and we how much thiamine was given 500 mg okay thiamine was given and why thiamine is given in this patient again alcoholic patient will have um, b1 thiamine B1 deficiency, sir, hmm. and uh, patient can be pushed to Wernicke's encephalopathy. Okay. So, uh, and we have started him on a prophylactic antibiotic like uh, augment, uh, augmentin mm-hmm. to prevent uh, aspiration, considering okay. aspiration pneumonia. Okay. Uh, then. Praldoxin, uh, where all it can be used? Uh, in OP poison. Sir, in this patient, basically, praldoxin we use it for OP poisoning, mm. but this patient had taken furidone, which is carbamate. Okay. But we weren't too sure. Praldoxin carbamate that it has no role because okay. of aging process. Okay. But then uh, we, uh, when we had sent for toxicology samples, we weren't really too sure. So the, uh, and and uh, patient had presented to us within 45 minutes. So for the benefit of doubt, we started praldoxin okay. because it was more of on the benefit side rather than any risk involved. and uh, if had the patient if he had really been sure that it's just carbamate poisoning there would be no role for praldoxin and okay. if the patient had presented Why to us no after role? four hours what is aging um so the the basically the receptors get uh, used up and no more receptors will be available for the reversibility of the poisoning carbamate is it is reversible or irreversible carbamate is reversible reversible other one uh, it's irreversible opioid poisoning is irreversible so depending on the time the irreversibility will become more severe before that if you are able to give uh, uh, this one it will be good but whereas in carbamate anyway it will reverse there is no no point in giving no need to give this drug okay. 
Uh, sir, we have sent for a pseudocode in S-trace level, hmm. which came out to be 1200. Okay. It's normal or high or low? It's not normal. normal. It is near, near normal. normal. Near normal. Okay. Mm, and our toxicology analysis came out to be chlorpyrifos. Okay. Which was again an OP poison. Okay. So in that case, we continued pralidoxum for 48 hours okay. and along with this, atropine infusion was ongoing and we had to monitor the patient's bronchorrhea because initial assessment showed secretions. So until the secretions had dried up, we continued on atropine hmm. and uh, following this, we switched to glycopyrrolate again hmm. as an anti-secretory agent. But pralidoxum was continued for 48 hours. What is the indication for glycopyrrolate? So it is just that glycopyrrolate has an anti-secretory agent, so it does not have, it does not act. Huh? Delirium. When will you add glycopyrrolate or when will you switch to glycopyrrolate? Delirium. Huh? Delirium. 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 Atropin toxicity that produces delirium. But if the patient does, the delirium does not improve after you starting pralidoxin, what do you do? See, you are having a patient who is having over atropinization or de delirium. You suspect it is due to uh, atropin and you stopped pralidoxin. And but the delirium is not improving with uh, your uh, glycoperlate. What will you do? What is the reason for that delirium? Alcohol intake and because alcohol can produce. I am talking about OP poison. OP itself can produce neurological dysfunction. So in that condition, what do you do? So you know that glycopyrrolate will not cross blood-brain barrier. Mm. So a patient who is on glycopyrrolate, now he is developing delirium because of OP compound. What will you do? Hmm? You can you, you give atropine both. You, you give uh, gly glycopyrrolate with smaller dose of atropine. Okay. <laughs> Since atropine is producing problem, you have stopped atropine. Mm. But the, the altered behavior can still be due to the OP and glycoperlate will not act there. So you have to add small dose of atropine along with glycoperlate to give full protection, control the bronchorrhea, control the altered behavior. You have to mix the two drugs, mm. mix two drugs. Okay, that can be given. Okay, how is the patient afterwards? Patient is uh, clinically better hmm. uh, and uh, maintaining good urine output and uh, patient is symptomatically better now. How long you have to follow up this patient? What are the complications of OP poisoning? Uh, in, after 48 hours, patient hmm. can develop intermediate syndrome. What is that intermediate syndrome? Uh, 48 hours following the ingestion, there can be delayed release from the fat. Okay. So, so patient, patient can end up again with OP poisoning features. It's like okay. a relapse, but at a later stage because of delayed secretions. Okay. So what do you do? What is the treatment for uh, intermediate syndrome? Continue atropine. Continue atropine, not pralidoxin. Continue only atropine. You have to continue the atropine. Mm. Then later, afterwards, if there is a severe poisoning, what happens? What is, what is the clinical findings of polyneuropathy? Food drop. Food drop. Food drop. Food drop is the most important. Any patient in ICU, if the patient is developing food drop, including OP poisoning, that is a bad sign. That indicates distal peripheral neuropathy. In OP poisoning, it is very Classically, you get a food drop. How do you manage that food drop? Patient is having OP poisoning. The patient is in your ICU. He develops food drop. What do you do? He said that. He said splinting. You have to mm. prevent that drop. You have to put splint and prevent the mm. drop. And like you told, physiotherapy <laughs> has to be started. Okay. What are the other complications in ICU other than OP as such? What other things you will take care? The DVT. DVT no prophylaxis. Issue. What is what DVT prophylaxis you have given for this patient? So this patient had early mobilization. Within hmm. like two two days itself, he was able to move around. Okay. So in that case, there wasn't any specific pharmacological uh, intervention, intervention okay. to be done. But if the patient has a prolonged ICU stay, then either the pneumatic stockings can be placed, or a patient can be again moved frequently with bed position okay. changes can be there. I, or we can start on uh, heparin, 5000 okay. international units, or as a BT dose, we continue for DVT prophylaxis. Okay. The other thing is this patient has kept NPO, so the question is when to break NPO. What is the need of NPO in OP poisoning? Why we keep the patient on NPO? What is the gastro, gastric problem of uh, OP poisoning? Corrodes the lining, the mucosal lining. Hmm. 
Huh? Gastric emptying. Gastric emptying time will be delayed. Lot of secretions will be there, and yeah, like GI tract also lot of secretions and emptying time is delayed. Gotcha. So even if you give food, it will not be emptied from the stomach, and patient can present with uh, like intestinal obstruction, mm. like features. So we have to be very careful. We have to add some drug which improves the motility. Okay, so we have to put a rice cube and aspirate whatever content is there. Continuous aspiration is required. Then you can set oral feeds. Means uh, while stew feeds. Catheterization is very important. So after 24 hours, if the patient's sensorium is full and is mm. able to tolerate feeds, then we can start on oral feeds as tolerated by the patient. Okay. So plenty of fluids. But then uh, the previously be people would give. Uh, emetic so that patient induces vomiting, but that's okay. contraindicated. That is not required. Uh, you're not allowed to induce emesis because again the mu mu esophageal mucosal tract gets exposed and it okay. causes more harm than good. Then um, what are the toxidromes of uh, OP poisoning? Pinpoint, toxidromes. Pinpoint pupils. Mm. Um, increase salivation, mm. lacrimation, urinary incontinence, mm. uh, diarrhea. Mm. Then emesis. Uh, gastric. Where else you get uh, pinpoint peoples? Uh, cocaine poisoning, mm. uh, opioid poisoning, mm. not cocaine, opioid poisoning, morphine, all these mm. things. Then, fontaine the infarct, fontaine infarct, bleed or fontaine infarct, and opioid poisoning. Mm. Okay. Dilated people. And metriasis, atropin. Mm. The patient's already been on atropinization mm. that point in time. Or alcohol causes metriasis. Mm. Any any okay, uh, plant poison? Datura. Datura. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Regarding the plant toxins, huh? Products and has to be given as intuition only. Things like if you are giving is more melanin, it may cause uh, so blood may cause rise to hypertension. It can cause. Normally, it is given only as infusion. As 20 minutes, we can give as a prolonged thing. It's not a mm. bolus push, but we Slow give infusion. the initial dose as over 20 to 30 minutes following this continuous infusion. Infusion. Mm. It's not an IV bolus. When atropine also can be given as a continuous okay. infusion. Then sugar glycemic control has to be. Mm. This patient is diabetic. This no, is not diabetes. Not diabetes. They are prone to um, recurrent hypoglycemia. One because of liver injury. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, that's it. And then patient has to be uh, kept in mind for any um, aspiration possibilities. Okay. The fever spikes and so. So basically, when there is a poisoning cases, you have to give primary care. Mm -hmm. Any patient. What are the primary cares you give for any patient? Not only OP poisoning. You have to give an emergency care for all OP all poisoning cases. Patient, be uh, uh, as possible. Patient, you have to uh, clean surface cover, and gastric surface decontamination. decontamination. decontamination so, decontamination, whether it is body surface or uh, gastric decontamination, is most important. Then look for the toxidromes. Mm -hmm. What toxidrome is available? You have to look for that. And uh, antidotes should be given as fast as possible because once these toxins go and attach it to your receptor. Then it will be very difficult to reverse it. That is aging. Yeah. What we are discussing, especially in OP compound poisoning, and most of the poisons are taken along with alcohol. Most of the poisons. Yeah. So we have to be very careful. We have to treat that also. Okay, and look for any additional like drugs uh, along with this. They even take uh, diazepam or any drug like that. That also should be taken care. Okay. Necrotic has to be also assessed. Which one? Necrotic no OP poisoning. ज वेरी Excess vision will go like this. Hmm. That type of patients, you have to like early intubation will be beneficial. Hmm. That's what he is telling. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.